Battle for Tukiad. Excerpted from Comstar Classified Report CTHD 5283055, Sanctum Beta Level Clearance. When Comstar learned that the clan's true goal in their invasion of the Innisfere was to conquer Terra and use it as a base for recreating the Star League, Presenter Marshal Focht and Primus Waterley together devised a plan to defeat the clans and preserve Terra. The clans and the Congards would fight for possession of Terra on a proxy world. If that planet fell to the clans, Comstar agreed to serve as administrators on the clan worlds, cease providing HBG services to the successor states, and relinquish terror to the victors. If the clans won this key battle, they would possess the resources to forge a new Star League. If the Comguards defeated the clans, the invaders agreed to limit themselves to those worlds already conquered, and refrain from seizing territories closer to Terra than a line drawn at Tukiad for 15 years. This gave the Innisfere breathing space to upgrade their technology closer to the clan's level, but also meant that they would still have to contend with the clan's activities above the truce line. Using the vast resources of Comstar's archives and his own knowledge of military strategy, the presenter marshal chose Tukiad, in the remnant of the Free Razalhag Republic, as the proxy world. Varied terrain and a small civilian population, as well as its proximity to the clan front lines, convinced presenter marshal Focht that Tukiad was the best choice. The presenter marshal spent countless hours studying tapes of battles between the clans and various inner sphere forces, and felt confident that he knew the one weakness of the clan fighting style. He was determined to exploit this Achilles heel during the Battle of Tukiad. He knew that the clan's fighting philosophy consisted of quick, conclusive attacks and short-term assault. The clan struck quickly and counted on quick victories, precluding any need for support services necessary to conduct a long-term campaign. The presenter marshal planned his defence carefully. He stockpiled enough repair parts and ammunition to supply his troops for more than a month. By using his forces to harass the clans rather than commit to a direct confrontation, he hoped to prolong the battle for Tukiad beyond the clan's capacity to support such an ongoing operation. The clan force's greatest advantage going into the battle was their experience. Though Fox Comguards had been training for combat for decades, they'd never experienced real war. The presenter marshal attempted to make up for this lack of experience by coordinating the battle from a deep bunker in the Tamo Mountains. His virtual reality construct allowed him to direct individual units anywhere on the field if it became necessary. Each of the six clans involved in the invasion attacked two cities on Tukiad. Clan Smoke Jaguar would attack Dinju Heights and Port Rassis. Clan Novacat had its objectives of Georgia and Tost. Clan Ghost Bear would attempt to seize Spanak and Luk. Clan Steel Viper would attack Kelly Springs and the Kozice Ranch Station. Clan Wolf targeted Burzo and Scupo. Clan Diamond Shark was assigned Urkanat and Kozice Prime. And Clan Jade Falcon would attack Hum Tulips and Olala. Comguard Holotates provided a roughly chronological record of the battle. The Bloodbath Begins The battle began on May 1st with each clan landing troops near their objectives according to strategies developed by each clan's Khans. Though Ilkhan Ulrich Kerensky functioned as the clan's war leader, the Khans declined to use him as a battle coordinator in the bidding for Tukiad. Clan Wolf hit their landing zone five days later. The first major encounter unfolded as the Smoke Jaguars landed their forces in two groups, hoping to win their objectives quickly, and perhaps regain some of the honour lost in their defeats on Walcott and Luthien. The Smoke Jaguar force landing in the Dinju Mountains pounced on the Comguard's 50th Division, the uncluttered speech, pinning them in the foothills. The relatively green 50th stood no chance against the Jaguar's Alpha Galaxy, and for a time, the Smoke Jaguars appeared likely to secure their objectives quickly. The Comguard's 401st, 207th and 367th Divisions herded Beta Galaxy into the bogs of the Rassus River Delta with hit-and-run attacks, using their superior knowledge of the terrain to decimate the Jaguars. Beta Galaxy quickly crumbled and was forced to withdraw. The Nova Cats fared no better. Their daring strategy of a mixed landing and drop turned to disaster when aerospace fighters of the Comguard's 417th Division destroyed the Alpha Galaxy Command dropship as it hovered over the landing zone. Like the Smoke Jaguars, Clan Nova Cat was lured into a well prepared battle site of Comstar's choosing. The Comguard's 9th Division, Bountiful Words, used air and ground forces to shatter the Nova Cat's advance just north of Joje, a handful of kilometres from their target, and drew the clan force into a war of attrition. 
The Novacats quickly became mired in a prolonged battle for which they were unprepared in both terms of supply and ammunition. The Ghost Bears made a better showing against the relatively green Congard's first army. In the first two days of the battle they shattered the 121st Division and swept towards Luck, but the 91st and 12th Divisions trapped the elite force of the Ghost Bears' 20th Polar Bear attack cluster and pounded them until they were forced to withdraw. The initial Jade Falcon and Diamond Shot landings were largely unopposed, but the Jade Falcon's cautious advance allowed the Presenter Marshal to inflict maximum damage using the same hit-and-run tactics that the House militaries had found effective in wearing the clans down. The Jaguars next fell prey to an ambush sprung in the tight confines of the Dinju Pass by the 323rd and 299th Divisions of the Comgard's 5th Army. With insight of their objective of Dinju Heights, the Jaguar Grenadiers would take heavy losses, managing to move through the pass, leaving blood and death in their wake. Both Smoke Jaguar Khans were killed at the height of this battle, and Ilkhan Kerensky ordered Smoke Jaguar to withdraw, fearing that the sudden lack of leadership and command structure would allow the remains of the clan to be utterly destroyed. That decision caused a bitter resentment that still flames between the Smoke Jaguars and Clan Wolf. Several Smoke Jaguar units, including the 6th Jaguar Dragoons, refused to obey the order, preferring death to dishonour. Only eight warriors of the 6th survived this bloodbath. Clan Diamond Sharks suffered the next loss to the Comgard Sword. The Sharks' 19th Heavy Cluster, the Barracudas, managed to inflict more than 30% losses against the 85th Division's Lions of the Periphery in a series of battles in the foothills overlooking Kuzitze Prime. The fighting was most bitter between the ambushing forces of the 85th 2nd and 4th Battalions and the Diamond Sharks' 222nd Assault Cluster, the Rippers. Only two warriors survived from the entire 222nd Cluster, and the clan stripped one of his blood name for his disgrace. By the 3rd of May, Clan Novakat had made three separate attempts to seize Joje and Tost. They ran out of ammunition quickly because they outfitted their Omnimex primarily with artillery and missile configurations despite the Ilkhan's warnings against using such a strategy based on non-energy weaponry. Despite this misjudgment, the clan made headway against the Comgard forces at Joje, and the 417th and 9th Divisions finally retreated toward Tost in order to force the clans to divide their attention between the 467th Division, the Whirlwinds at their rear, which were attempting to cut off the supply lines and landing zones, and the division that they faced. The Comgards harassed Beta and Gamma Galaxies, luring them into quick skirmishes that used up their ammunition. Gamma Galaxy was forced to withdraw, luring the 244th and the 467th into a Beta Galaxy ambush. Beta Galaxy defeated both forces and won several Comstar supply depots. Comstar immediately launched a furious counterattack, however, rupturing the Nova Cat lines and overrunning their positions. When the Comguards once again controlled more than half of the Lusijay Lake district, the Nova Cats reluctantly withdrew. Clan Novacat suffered the most staggering losses of any clan on Tukiad, less than three stars returned to the dropships. According to Rom's sources in the Occupation Zone, each of these warriors marked the shame of their survival by painting their Omnimex red. Clan Steel Viper learned from Clan Smoke Jaguar's mistake and chose a more conservative drop pattern. Even though the Comguards had time to dig into positions between the clan drop and their objectives by fighting a delaying action using artillery and aerospace fighters, Khan Breen's Vipers managed to advance toward Kozitze Ranch Station. As the Steel Vipers crossed enemy lines, they became mired in a hellhole known as Devil's Bath, just 18 kilometers from their primary objective. A horrific combination of geysers, boiling mud and narrow confines between massive granite columns, the region stretched for dozens of kilometers. The Vipers advanced through Devil's Bath, pushing the Comguards ahead of them, but expended too much ammunition in the process. The Comguards continued to attack the Viper supply lines, stripping the force in Devil's Bath of critical munitions. Clan Ghost Bear lost the 7th Bear Guards of Beta Galaxy assigned to cover the withdrawal from the strike at Luck when the 12th Comguard Division, Pure Wave Forms, ambushed them in the Hulf Forest and set fire to the woods. Khan Buchenberger made a formal protest to the Ilkhan against these Comguard tactics, but his forces in the forest had already been wiped out. The Ghost Bear's Alpha Galaxy had Spanak under siege, and when the remnants of the Beta and Delta Galaxies arrived to support, the clan forces pushed the Comguard's 1st Division back. Presenter Marshal Fox withdrew the 1st Division from the centre of Spanak, realising that the Bears now controlled the 91st Supply Depots and were positioned to inflict more damage than they would take. Only clans Ghost Bear and Wolf recognised the importance of protecting their supply lines at this point. 
Ghost Bear realised their supply line mistake only after landing, but managed to overcome it by capturing ComGuard munitions. Clan Diamond Shark faced a days-long stalemate with the 3rd ComGuard army. The only decisive action took place between Gamma Galaxy and the 85th Division. The 85th disrupted the Shark supply lines for an entire day, and Gamma Galaxy retaliated by destroying the ComGuard unit entirely. The 2nd and 5th Army's arrival cut the Sharks off completely from their supplies, however, and the ComGuards dislodged the clan from their fortified positions with a barrage of artillery, and when the clans attempted to break away and withdraw from the planet, destroyed their forces completely. Clan Jade Falcon lost fewer troops, but failed to accomplish its objectives. The 11th Comguard harassed the Falcons constantly as they moved toward Ulala and Hump Tulips, mostly whittling away at their supply lines per the Presenter Marshal's plan. When the clan finally reached the rushing Presno River, Comguard sappers destroyed the bridges just as the Falcons crossed. The Falcon Guards, a unit still tainted for their massive, humiliating loss on Twycross, managed to cross the turbulent river, strike at the rear of the Comguard units on the far side that were maintaining an artillery barrage, and created a beachhead for a heavier Jade Falcon assault. The Falcon Guards continued past the crossing toward Ulala, one of their target cities, realising almost too late that the target of the coordinates provided was not Ulala, but a Comguard trap. The Jade Falcons moved steadily through Olala, taking heavy losses but advancing until Comguard reinforcements arrived from Humtulips. A simultaneous attack on the bridge defences and a lucky Comguard strike on a Falcon ammunition depot convinced the Jade Falcon Khans that they didn't have enough supplies to take either objective and reluctantly ordered their withdrawal. The withdrawal itself was also costly, as the Comguards attacked the clan landing zone with dropships and executed a rear assault on the retreating troops. A trinary of elementals and elements of the Falcon Guards foiled Comstar's two-pronged attack, and most of the remaining Falcon force made it off-world. Clash of Titans Clan Wolf entered the Battle of Tukid on the fifth day of the conflict. Ilkhan Ulrich Kerensky's insight into Presenter Marshal Fox's methods, the intelligence and familiarity of Innisfear tactics displayed by Khan Natasha Kerensky and the warrior Phelan Kel Ward, plus days spent observing other clan battles with Comstar, gave Clan Wolf a distinct advantage. Upon landing, Clan Wolf immediately formed fighting ranks. Their first contact was the inexperienced 283rd Division, part of the Comguard's defensive line guarding Burzo and Scupo, Clan Wolf's objectives. The 3rd Battle Cluster of Beta Galaxy, the 7th Battle Cluster of Gamma Galaxy, and the 4th Wolf Guards of Alpha Galaxy pushed the 278th Division and the 10th Army from their positions, but the 283rd prevented Clanwolf from closing a loop around the Comguard's main defensive force. When the Comguards pulled back to establish a new defence line, Clanwolf did not follow, and Comstar quickly discovered why. Using a series of sweeping strikes, Natasha Kerensky's 13th Wolf Guards, including the elite Wolf Spiders, attempted to slip around the 10th and circumvent the 166th in a drive for Scupo. Presenter Koivu sent the veteran 282nd Comguard Division, Clear Thoughts, to stop them. The 282nd suffered heavy losses, but did stop the Wolf Spiders drive and allowed the 10th Army to gain its next defensive position. The battle so far revealed two important factors in Clan Wolf's favour. The clan had continued its early strategy of maintaining ample campaign supplies and protecting those supply lines, and for Tukid, it configured most Omnimax with energy-based weapons to make each unit more autonomous than ever. Presenter Marshal Focht feared that Clan Wolf might turn the tide of battle across Tukid. The 10th Army, under the command of Presenter Mirvang, stood between Clan Wolf and the cities of Scupo and Burzo, but Clan Wolf launched another offensive before the Comguards could dig in. The attackers broke through the line, then suddenly encountered entrenched mechs, tanks, and infantry rising from an apparently open hilltop. Sheer stubbornness kept the Wolf Spiders in the fight, and they began to push Comstar back once again. Just as it appeared they might encircle Scupo, Comguard reinforcements arrived in the form of the 9th Army, led by Presenter Mulvena. Clan Wolf failed to advance further in this push, but the Comguard's victory came at a high cost to the 10th. The 10th Army suffered losses higher than 50%, largely from the 138th Division, known as the Bandits. As Clan Wolf tightened the knot around its two targets, Clan Steel Viper struggled to fight its way out of Devil's Bath. Two days after Clan Wolf had dropped to the surface of Tukid, the Steel Vipers managed to surround the Comguard's 6th Division almost at the centre of the pits and geysers of this hellish terrain. Striking repeatedly, the Vipers destroyed the 6th and began the long crawl out. Though victorious against the 6th, the Vipers Gamma Galaxy emerged from Devil's Bath and faced two reserve divisions of the 2nd and 5th Comguard armies. 
these fresh troops broke the Viper's front line, but couldn't rout the clan forces. When the 6th Army's 386th and 1st Divisions arrived to back up the Comguard troops only 10 kilometers from Kazutse Ranch Station, the Vipers were forced to withdraw. Clan Steel Vipers suffered 25% losses, and both Khans were wounded. The Steel Vipers' retreat left only two clans on Tukia to defeat the Comguards, Wolf and Ghost Bear. The Ghost Bears held Spanak against artillery bombardment from the 4th Army, and the troops not pinned down by artillery or necessary to hold Spanak attempted to take look. As they attacked, divisions of the 1st Army assaulted a bear supply depot. Running low on supplies, parts and ammunition at this point, the Ghost Bears were forced to pull back to defend their depot, losing most of the ground that they had gained. Despite the fact that several stars of their Alpha Galaxy's 50th strike cluster the Maulers had managed to break into Lux suburbs, too few troops remained to take the city, and the Ghost Bears ended their campaign by winning only one objective. Clan Wolf continued to press the attack. As the Wolf Spiders broke the 138th Division, the 11th Wolf Guards of Delta Galaxy careened into the lines held by the 278th Division, clear courtesy. But despite the excellent coordination of the Congard forces, the Wolf Guards tore the 278th apart. Scoopo fell to Clan Wolf when the Congards retreated, realising that the Clan forces pushing to connect with the rest of their force would encircle the Congards in Scoopo. The Wolves aimed their next axis of attack at Burzo, and the 10th Army bent under the force of Clan Heavy and Assault Omnimax. The 9th moved to support the 10th, but Clan Wolf breached the defences where the two armies should have met, neatly splitting the two forces. The 11th Army arrived as reinforcements, but Clan Wolf declined to attack further. Instead, the clan concentrated on raiding Comstar supply depots and creating their own. Though Clan Wolf had enough mobility to work around the Comstar positions in the Peritsu Mountains, they chose to engage Presenter Stinson's 11th Comguards directly, eventually breaking off a series of small skirmishes to gather for a coordinated attack. Beta Galaxy inflicted heavy damage on the 11th, even though Khan Garth Radic was killed at the peak of this battle, but the war ended before the Comguards' 13th Army could join the fray. Despite the short-lived blow to the Wolf Clan morale inflicted by Radic's death, the Comguards couldn't unseat the Wolves from either Burzo or Scoopo. Striking at Clan Wolf supply lines would prove fruitless because Khan Kerensky heavily reinforced these vital points. Her knowledge of the Innisfear tactics gave Clan Wolf its successes. Counting the losses. After 21 days of fighting, the Ill Khan of the clans conceded victory to Comstar. Only Clan Wolf successfully gained control of both its target cities. Clan Ghost Bear held Spanak but failed to take look. Based on its surviving forces, Jade Falcon would have a draw. Both sides suffered staggering losses, and it soon became apparent that Tuki had represented much more than the largest military battle in three centuries. The Comguards ended the conflict with near 40% dead, and more than that number injured. Clan Smoke Jaguar suffered the highest losses with 32% dead, while Clan Wolf lost only 20% of its forces on Tuki. Both the clans and the Innisfere sacrificed too many men and women for either side to claim a true victory, but this battle represented one of the Innisfere's finest hours. Comstar willingly bloodied the soil of Tukyid, to stand between terror and the clan's tyranny for the next decade and a half. <laughs>